It's Sunday. Why are you yelling? You look so awake. I'm actually like you have no bags under your eyes. I'm a little sad about it. Really? It's. No I think pain. I've been. I think I've been. Uh, I didn't sleep. I haven't. Sl- I've actually barely slept in the last like five days. But I've been taking the, care of my skin a lot more. The foil's not working. No, I took it down. I Why? got these blackout like <laughs> shades because it was just like too psychotic. It was also like I wanted to get some natural light during the day, and yeah. it was like I can't do this every day. <laughs> like, put I'm not making sandwiches on my fucking thing every day. Uh, I got these like suction cup ones that you can put on. Okay. They're not bad, but they still have a little light that creases through. I think I just have a lot on my mind too. Like mm. a lot of shit that's kind of stressing me out right now. That's probably keeping me awake a little bit, but. Want to talk about it? Not really. Just let's go. Okay. I, I, I think, no- I'm, not, I'm not sure what it is, to be honest. I think yeah. it's, I think it's mainly draft guy related because we're okay. getting into all, like almost August. And uh, we had a call this morning and we had a call yesterday. Yesterday's call. We're like progressing, but we've had a couple like canceled meetings and we do two a week. So like one of them canceled it's like once a week we don't make enough progress that we need to be um so yesterday i was like yeah i don't want to like push your creative process you know and like put you guys on a weird timeline but what's the eta eta on this yeah he's like oh like probably two or three more weeks and i was like I, we need i need that before and he's like okay we'll start meeting every day then i was like oh wow bet. so we've done yesterday we're gonna do we did today friday and then we'll probably start meeting every single day going forward until it's launched. So I'm feeling a little bit better day by day. I'm like chipping away at things, mm. uh, but it's been difficult because obviously I'm just putting out so much content daily Dude, along with my YouTube is like bings are going off only on you. I don't really follow much on YouTube, but yeah. every single like I'm working like really fucking it's hard out right of now. control. How many videos you're having? Yeah. There's a lot of content flying around everywhere. So I think once the draft guide is live and I feel comfortable with the actual product we have out, I'll have a lot less stress. Um, other than that, yeah. You know what else has kind of been on my mind a little bit too? Like, I've noticed... I'm putting out a lot of content, but like... I'm enjoying, like, life a little... This is going to sound dumb the way I'm putting it, but like, I'm enjoying life a lot more right now than I am specifically... I'm almost more focused on social things than I am like BDG right now. Okay. And that's like the first time that's happened to me in a long time. But I don't think your work is hindering on that also, right? Or do you think I don't so? know. I don't know. I, I There are things that I feel like maybe. Um, it's just like I like creating. It's like I like being social. I like creating content. But it's like some of the business things are becoming... A little bit more um, secondary in my like pure value system. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I don't know. Like, like what in general? Like when you say business, focusing on our products and our services, like selling things, working with sponsors. Um, even even like the vlogs that I would put out for a long time were always like me talking about what's happening in the business, like very in depth for like twenty minutes at a time. And I don't know if that's because I already have an outlet with you doing it. And then like in the vlogs, I do it with Tony sometimes, but like, I don't have the urge to like wake up and be like, yo, this is what's on my plate for the day. This is why I'm doing this. You know what I'm saying? I get that. I'm just like, I feel like I'm coming more into myself personally and like what I'm enjoying. And it's just the first time that it's not completely centered around building the brand itself. You know? Gotcha. Well, I think we've had many discussions on you saying that, you were going to pivot on not really pushing out. Like maybe the draft guide isn't going to be the bread and butter of this company, or maybe just the website's going to work as the Patreon. So it's going to be better. So you can include more of the other creators. So do you think this is just coming I, out of like, I think it's, how? I think it's a, a combat. I think it's likely the perfect wave of COVID being done living in this area and it being summer. In New York, to be honest with you. Yeah, I mean... There's just, like, nothing I want to kind of miss out on right now. I'm like, everybody's kind of crazy down here. The energy's, like, very high. Yeah. And I'm just... Right now, I'm not really willing to sacrifice... I mean, we're getting a little bit older. You know what I mean? Like, we don't have that many summers left in our... (laughs) That's why I'm trying to get this new job. (laughs) Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm like, I'm trying to get out of here. I'm like, I'm not really at the point right now where I'm willing to sacrifice social things if I think I'm going to enjoy it for, like, work. I feel like that's a little bit of a problem, though. I agree. That's what I'm like. So, that's what I'm saying right now. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cause yeah. this is like the first time I, I was I, trying to make it as it seemed like, Oh, maybe this is going the way you want it. But now it's seeming like, but it could be, that's the thing. Like it? if, if I'm enjoying yeah, maybe long-term, maybe not. 
But like, but long term is something you need to think about. No, or no, you're not doing. Yeah, that I don't anymore. think it's like that dramatic yet. But I'm just saying it's the first time I've seen this shift in my mindset in a long time. Yeah, I mean, and I think especially during this like time of season, usually it's just a, like my day is my day is like the same. It's just like it's just like wake up, do my piece of content for that day or the next day, ship it over to Tony to edit. I know he'll get it done. After well, that, now, I have I no think real concerns. It's becoming a business. It's it's coming now. You're having people. That are helping you. Maybe you're maybe, paying. Maybe like, I've streamed. Yeah, maybe I've streamed the shit that I don't like you were so doing much that, that I feel that way. That you were doing everything prior just to yourself. And now that you have an editing team that's taken a, a lot off your plate, some people probably will feel it in another way just because of what maybe what they're doing. But like you have an editing team, so you're still making I've never seen as many videos. Obviously, some are shorts, but you said you even shortened it down, and you still get they're still getting good quality yeah. content, and you're still growing. Yeah. I don't know if you've looked at the numbers. Is it, is it Beating t- 2019 at least in like um, I think I think uh, I think we we're growing we stagnated on growth from like a growth level like yeah. uh, it's it's not we're growing right probably 80 to 100 subs a day which is a pretty good rate right now um, but it's been like that for probably a couple of weeks and I was like oh maybe we'll just like hit it like this but I remember every year this probably happens where it's like consistent growth a couple of videos pop off you get big days like uh. Cam. When Cam Akers went, I think we bumped up like 250 subs in one day because it was like a breaking video. But then usually like mid-August to end of August is really when you see that spike. And I kind of forget. Every, I'm always like, oh, yeah, like all the way from July through the end of August is big. And then every year I'm like, no, it's really like August 20th through like September 7th or something yeah. like that. Um, so I think we're going fine. And I'm, I'm not worried because I'm not lacking for like passion on content. I know that will continue to run out. Um I wonder what I'm going to do in season, though, because I think once like the weather dies down a little bit and You're it's good. not as fun... I'll probably be like, ah, fuck, you know what? I'm back to thinking about this stuff. Yeah, but you're definitely going to have to think that hard because if you're like this during your busy time and you just focus in off season, I feel like that's that's a recipe for disaster. Maybe. It's a big roller coaster. It could be a recipe for greatness. It may be, but I was thinking about this. It's actually funny that you're saying this because I was thinking about this at the beach. So I had to get somewhere was using Waze, and then I had to do something, and I was using zoom and i was just like there's so many people in different industries right that had a, such a head start like map quest you used to print that shit out like what was the um that video one we used to use in high school skype like skype had a head start now look at microsoft Teams. you're talking about navigation no just anything in oh, general yeah. that had head starts and now with covid now they're they're big now then do you even know if map quest is a like a thing anymore probably not yeah, like, like aol probably bought them for like 50 times less than what they were valued at 10 years ago. exactly yeah. so i was saying there's a lot of people that had a head start and i think in bdge on youtube you had a little not a head start but you got in before yeah. fantasy football became such a a big thing on social media platforms and now i'm seeing other people kind of i don't really follow much people on um, fantasy football but i see like a couple of people like really getting into it and getting a lot of followers. Do you, are you taking advantage of that anymore? You think now like you, you might plateau a little bit because I'm not sure. that's uh, what I, I like, this, you know, you had to we'll start. Know are you going to, we'll gonna, know within two, by yeah. the end of August, by the end of September, I'll have a good feel by like what our YouTube growth will be for like the next three years. I think really if it, if it stagnates and it's like what it was last year, then I'm, pretty willing to be like okay like this is what youtube fantasy football is right now um that being said we're doing a good job diversifying like tiktok we're gaining almost like 100 subscribers every other day or something so we're up to like 1500 followers on there and we're taking the shorts that i make on youtube so we'll uh we'll keep like diversifying that way because my my only concern now just thinking about everything is to say like you're saying all social media is doing well and then next year happens what if you're not doing well financially as you were like prior. Mm-hmm. How are you going to pay these guys? And then, you know, all their steam's going to die out once the cash is gone. So, you know okay. what I'm saying? Like here's, yeah. Uh, also on the finances, who do I pay this year? Basically gave, I think 20 K to editing, editing 10 K goes to Ike. He's doing, he's basically doing, <clears throat> Animal's House and Fade the Public. In Fade the Public, we've done live streams for like 75% of the videos. Realistically, right now, if I'm being wildly honest and transparent, like the only person I should really be paying is probably Tony. 
Yeah. He's doing all my editing work. Mm -hmm. Every day, doesn't matter when I send him that shit. He'll probably edit this video. Uh, he's getting good, too. Yeah. Like, he's doing well. He's progressing, and he's very into it, obviously. But um, you're gonna, he's going to need to get paid, like, if he's going to try. I, I gave him a, a nice little check the other day. Um, so I'm going make sure to make sure he stays around in New York. Yeah. And Scott, what do you think about that? Yeah, so the problem, I mean, this is not a problem with Scott, but, like, I always knew what his role was going to be. It was going to be more of, like, the manager, the organizer of things. Um, and I still think there's a lot of room there. They got on a call, like, last week, so we're seeing it progress a little bit. But, like, the kid Davis from TikTok has basically, like, taken over a lot of work, and he's, like, putting some of the videos onto Reels and TikTok. But this is probably a conversation I need to have with Scott rather than, like, airing it out now. I'll probably talk before this goes live. Mm -hmm. Um, but like Davis was just another dude that wasn't involved in like the money. This is like, he just is just doing it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it's like, it's like, you're like, what if you don't have enough money to pay the people where I stand right now? Literally, if I didn't pay people what I did this year, I don't really think anyone, anything would change as of where we're at right now. I get, I get that this year people like, you know, also always are going to look for some sort sure. of outcome. No, no, no. That's I, what I I'm you. getting at. Yeah. Obviously people are going to start with passion. But how long can passion get you there? If you know your passion's going like funneling through someone else. Yeah, but it's not like I. I'm. Not, this is me totally asking. Yeah, yeah. So. It's not like I overshot financially paying people this year. Um, no, I don't think you did too. But every year it's going to go bigger. Maybe, but like I'm saying, if but if I have a guy like Tony or something, it doesn't necessarily need to be like I don't need to pay him twenty five thousand dollars to edit like ten minute videos and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like. I th think we'll be fine with that. Yeah. It's not like um, until we have someone on full time salary, and I need to be. Guaranteeing a sixty, seventy, eighty thousand dollars salary like that, yeah, that would become that shit would keep me up at night probably. Yeah, if I was worrying about finances that way, but um, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. So you're just not hitting a crossroads. You're just seeing where this is taking you. Yeah, this is the first time. I think the I think the way to conclude this is that this is the first time I feel like I'm living in the present when it comes to what we're doing, not focusing on what we've done, not trying to do. plan around the future it's just like i'm just doing what i'm doing working hard and seeing what comes from it and then like two months i think i could start to project uh more correctly all right that makes sense like you said you talked to who um what's his name that owns underdog jeremy yeah i remember you saying you were talking to him in miami once it was like what do you do like how do you do everything he's just like i just literally have people that are doing things for me and it's pretty easy once you do that, and I think you're I obviously some pretty good numbers of underdog too. Yeah, I financially. feel like you're obviously not anywhere comparable to him, but kind of taking that platform of like outsourcing is helping you personally, business related, yeah, and all that. Yeah, um, yeah, that's the other thing too. It's like we'll always, as long as I put out really valuable content, money will always come in, whether it be from me making it, me selling stuff. Or someone else that wants me to be a part of what they're doing. That's why I'm not concerned with that. Like, we're we're making good money from the underdog deal that we made um, on, 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 on terms of, like, a, on a monthly basis from what we're bringing in customer-wise. Yeah. And I think that has room to shoot up this month, next month, and then in the season as well. And then, of course, we took, you know, a little bit of equity in there. So, like, when that deal goes through, whenever they sell, if they sell will probably be good for a while. Yeah, that's good. That. So I'm not really worried yeah. about finances. I, I, guess, I am. I am because it seems like it's a short term band aid kind of solution. Yeah. Um, but, but right that, now, but like that's you like said, you're not trying though. to do a long term. Anything, that's what BDG so. is, though. It's like year over year, yeah. we have to reinvent how we make fucking money. Yeah. Literally every year, I've had to figure out a new way to do it. Which is why it's been so hard to like grow, like you know, hundred, how hundred to want. 250 yeah. to a million to five million. It's like every fucking year, it's like some new bullshit gets thrown at us. I'm like, I gotta just get back to where we were because it's a new thing, you know. I feel like I could never do that. That's crippling anxieties. No, it sucks ass. But yeah. like, so big, big follow this this week. Big follow. How many times did you slide in this man's DMs? Already? I haven't DM'd him once yet. Cool, common collective. No, just probably too nervous. <laughs> <laughs> so I was at work and you you sent me a tweet and I was like, "What the fuck is this?" And Gary V's office is where I work. I've never seen him there, but I know he's there. I was like, 100% you're coming. You're like, I'm outside. And I was like, I got to fucking see this. We'll see what's going on. Yeah, well, I was I was pumped up. Well, I think I, I hate his fan base. I just want to put that out there. <laughs> I mean, you, it's 9 million people. It's like 3%, no, the Hudson 3 Yard, of America. Their Hudson yeah. Yards fan base. I hated them. Yeah. Um, 
He right. is so kind. I don't know if it's real or not, Great but he is so it's kind. Obviously, it's real. I know. He's been putting out the same content for 10 years. It's out of control. Person. Yeah, he's a beast. Um, that was crazy. First time you saw him? First time I've seen him in okay. person. I just had so much energy that day. I was so pumped. And he tweeted it out. I was like, ah, fuck it. Like, I should go. And then obviously I knew you were working there. And uh, Gary V comes out and like... In that situation, it's so tough because I'd like to say, like, you're just like, yo, like, you got to do something. I'm just like, one, when you're in a crowd of a bunch of people, like, in order to get noticed, you got to be, like, really obnoxious or annoying. I'm just like, that's not really, like, I don't feel comfortable doing that. And yeah. every single person there is also like, dude, I've been listening to you for eight years and you've changed my but life. But you got to shoot your shot at least. Yes. Which oh, I, I was, I, I, I didn't think, I, I don't know, you were a little... You're a little hesitant. I was like, just get on fucking line. Just do something. Yeah, I was. I'm, I was pissed because when you left, he was like doing the selfies and then he was going to do a Q&A and I was like literally right now. I was like two feet away from him and then uh, someone came whispered in his ear. I was like, you got to go to this meeting. And he was like, I got a hard stop right now. I was like, fuck. I would have chopped it up with him probably for, for, a little, for a little while. And I honestly feel like based off the interactions that I've heard him have over the years, like I think me and him would have... I think he would be like, yo, I really fucking like this. Like, I think we'd I have think a so great too. conversation. We we did a killer move. There's a long line for the photos, and then he started giving out free money, a.k.a. It's like anime comic books. Got them up there. They're somewhere on the fucking... Oh, desk. you took some? It was after he gave out like 50 times, and he just kept saying free money right in my face. I was like, all right, fuck it. I'll yeah. take it. And I, like everyone started huddling. I was like, get in line right now. That was huge. I was like, we, we got it. We're good to go. Yeah, and then we got the picture, and I was literally on a high for like the next 48 hours after that. Yeah, I know. You You were telling me. You were you were on a high. I gave I gave my story time. I did a mock draft uh, video yeah. on, on Monday, and the entire the full hour was just like me recapping Sunday. <laughs> the whole video. I don't think anyone's learned anything about fantasy football. From Probably me. not. How many dates have you reeled in this week? Um, I've been on one. What's today? Wednesday. Yeah. No Thursday. I've been on one. So yeah, I didn't go to the one le- Tuesday night. Went Wednesday. The one I was going to do tonight doing either sunday or monday friday night got got a big one friday night saturday uh kind of i want to go to the beach saturday wilson's trying to go to the beach so i might just do that instead it's like it could be anywhere from like two to six over the next week i would say there's not even that many days left (laughs) you're gonna double up extended it to the seven over the next week. okay oh next week i thought you said this week and yeah i was like damn you can do it two days i had never felt even the day after that i was like shooting my shot everywhere and i was like you know i can't i was like starting to hit on the i've been on a big shopping like bender the last like two weeks for some reason i've been been buying a lot of new pants and stuff why haven't you bought me anything i think i deserve something I don't like know your size really, and I'm just like beast. Big, <laughs> big. Yo, where's your big section? Yeah, where's your big and small? <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I was just like on a high, and I was like very, very good mood. Sunday, just shooting shots everywhere. We had a great fucking day because we came back here, we cracked the wine, finished it in like five seconds. I was like, Tony was here, and TJ was here. I was like, let's go to the park. Went to the park, ran into Zendaya, ran into not real, ran into the g- girl that TJ has been seeing for a little while you just kept running into people watching square park you don't realize how small like the downtown area is i guess so tiny i yeah, feel so like you can just see every if you know people here it's just dude, you know what else is bullshit so uh we we brought the football to the park and uh we wanted to throw it around for a little bit and i was like tony like go deep or whatever you're like dude i'm not going deep like you're not gonna be able to throw it that far and we had been at the beach the day before and i was like yeah. Yo, i was like slinging that shit i was like i, I felt like i was slinging a little bit too yeah i was like I, we'll have no problem yeah throwing this ball there so i was like i told you it wasn't even like that deep he was probably like 30 yards away from me, easily to do with this ball. And I don't know why. I think there was like a tree hanging over. So I got like a little anxious about making sure I didn't throw it up and like line drived it. Fired it. And I just see there's two groups of people, a guy and a girl, and then behind them, two guys. And I see it just whizzing in their direction. And I'm like, oh, it's about to hit this girl straight in her face. Oh, no. It goes past the first group. And it smacks the second group. The guy had like a cup of, of white claw or some shit. And it just boom. And everything just exploded into the air. And I was like, I was like so pissed because the day before I was like, yo, my arm is so good at the fucking <laughs> beach. And Tony was like, dude, you're going to hit somebody if you throw it. And I was like, you motherfucker. Did you go and apologize? Went apologize. We ended up like hanging out with those dudes for like three hours after that. <laughs> Made good friends with them. Awesome. And we went to a restaurant on McDougal that Tony's roommate works at. Tony has a roommate? Uh, Tony's got two roommates, I think. He moved into a new apartment like last month. Oh, really? I thought he was with his brother. 
<clears throat> never lived with his brother. He lived on he lived in Sh- in on Fifteenth Street. I by, thought he, then he went to by like himself. yeah. And then I he, thought he went. Then he went up to up uptown, not yeah. with his brother. Oh, he moved in with a dude that he knew from California beforehand. What? I had no idea. Okay. Yeah, and that dude worked at uh, Mineta Tavern. Gotcha. Uh, uh, Paulie DM me best cheeseburger in New York City. <laughs> It was really good. First thing I had, I didn't fucking, I didn't eat that whole day. The only thing I had was alcohol. We sit down. I was like, I'm getting roasted duck. It was like 48 bucks on the menu. <laughs> TJ got a big ass steak. Tony got the hamburger or the cheeseburger or whatever. And then his roommate came out and was like, I love duck. Sorry, keep going. Dude, it was so fucking I love good. Duck. It tasted like, duck rib. it tastes like really, yeah. like really good rib. Um, his roommate kind of came out after a little while and was like, I can't really like push the envelope on this bill because it's, it's a really nice restaurant. Uh, the manager's like gonna get pissed or whatever. So I was like, I was like, let me uh, let me try to say something. And I was like flirting with her when I first walked in a little while. And I was like, let me try to like sh- shoot my shot. So I went back in there, flirted with her. That's when I got that's when I got her number. Say we we're gonna go out next week. Will the waiter comes back out and was like, congratulations, you got the fucking bill paid for. Jeez. The shit was gonna be. We had we were with, uh, I want to say seven people. We all got multiple rounds of drinks. We got like expensive ass food. It was probably like a good four or five hundred dollars. That's wild, and that's the shit I was saying. I was like, "Fuck, I should have went out," but this job is killing me. So I need, and I, I'm now convinced. Like, I'm, there's like two jobs available, and one I like we talked about. I might hate. I'm just doing it just for my personal life. I need yeah. getting my personal life back because I've lost it in the last like eight months. And COVID, obviously, no one had a personal life. Yeah. So because I'm itching to go out, I and I just can't. Because I work all the fucking time. Yeah. That's that's why I texted you that day. I was like, yo, are you coming? I like just felt the energy after I left. I didn't Park. really trust you. I, like, you know, it was just at the point of the time. And I was like, by the time I'm out, he'll be gone. Because you texted me at like two. And you're like, let's go. Oh, no, we didn't and leave I was the like, park until like six. Yeah. And I was like, I- I'm working. So by seven, you'll be done. But I told you now we got a code word when I when I have to go out. Yeah, wait, what was it again? <laughs> the ham is salty. The ham is salty. <laughs> that's yeah. that's what I know. I have that was, to. That was a rare uh, a rare energy for me. I feel like. But maybe, maybe not, it's not rare. It's just coming back. That's what I'm saying. Fuck bike. Rewind it. Big fucking bike. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> um. I think that was like we almost went. We tried to go to the comedy cellar, but the tickets were sold out. Went to this place, Surreal Ice Cream. They had great fucking ice cream. It was like blue. And actually, that's the... Oh, yeah. Right there. Oh, nice. Oh, it comes they, in a mason jar. It, they serve it in a mason jar. Yeah, it's cool as shit. Nice. Anyways, um, Tony just said, yo, I'm heading to heading over to you to vlog shit. I have a... I have a bit Heather's last day at her job. And this is our... Today? Five-year anniversary of dating. But we're not counting it anymore since I already proposed to her. So I don't need to get her a gift. Wait, so you're not celebrating... Oh, so now you go off of... The engagement... When I get we get when married. you get married, yeah. Ooh, interesting. So I get a nice like year buffer, no gifts. It's big. Yeah, but Wait, I mean, that I'm, was today though. Today is the day I asked her out, and you're like, no fucking way, no. I wish I screenshotted that text when I told you I was starting to date Heather. <laughs> but we're going. She today's her last day at her old job, so we're gonna go out to a nice steakhouse in Montclair. It's actually in Bloomfield. It's like an old ass steakhouse. I'm like, this place looks sick. Yeah, she should go to Mineta Tavern. You can double date. You don't have a date. You can get Could one. Could if yeah. I showed up there. Well, maybe after the podcast, we'll call it Heather. Whatever. I think she would be down. Yeah, I probably wouldn't do that. Yeah, I you're, you're trying to get laid. I just get laid. Oh, by the same person to get laid. of all the time. This is stupid. I had a, not me. I don't have a business proposition. Someone was telling me about their business they want to start. And I want to get your thoughts. So he wants to start. You know how, like, you would never go to East Rutherford to the the racetracks and bet. It's like a scummy-ass place. And, like, the weirdos. Would you go to somewhere that had, like, booths with, like, mad TVs? You pay, like, an entry fee to just watch games. Not, like, loud music, but it's, like, a lounge. BYOB, but there's food there. Like, a higher class You're literally betting talking lounge. about, like, the Barcelona sports books. These casinos are, like, doing that now. Yeah, but like now that gambling is becoming legal. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Would like, do you think someone making that like privately would would work? Uh, because BYOB, and then you know, obviously, you just do your own bets. But like, I think you pay like a hundred bucks to just sit at a big ass thing with like multiple TVs, pick your games, what you want to watch. Okay, that sounds like a restaurant, but you just have the remote control. 
Yeah, but it's lounges. It's kind of like not. It's gonna be like bar food, I guess. It wouldn't be like I think you uh, wouldn't get like a. I think what Barcelona and the casinos are doing makes sense because you could also gamble on the games while watching them. Yeah. Um. Because Jersey's already illegal, so you could just gamble. But that's what I'm saying. Now you have yeah, somewhere that you have all the TVs. Yeah, that sounds. I'm. That's, so we, I should tell him not to do. It just this. sounds. I mean, like you know how much <laughs> money you'd have to have back for that to work. That just he, sounds like a restaurant. Literally, I guess the guy had a lot. Has a lot of money. He was saying sounds like an upscale sports restaurant or something. Yeah, maybe. But he was talking about like lounges. So I guess I should just tell him it's not going to work. I mean, I <laughs> I don't know if I'd go that far. I just feel like you need something. Uh, something that differentiates it. That's actually like you're either going to be able to gamble while you're there, at the place. Or you're either yeah. going to be able to like gamble through them. Yeah. And I was like, you cannot do that. I was yeah. like, the money on that would be in, out of control. Yeah, no way. So he was just saying how it could be like a like a high class sports lounge, but catering to gambling. Yeah. I mean I guess that could that could work. I feel like it works but, for like Barcelona because they're enti- they have a billion fucking person fan base that's exactly. gambler. But right? if you had somewhere like in Jersey, I would feel like that. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. yeah. I, don't I know. have no money, so I told him I can't do anything for him. <laughs> so I was like, oh, yeah. So I'm he good. came to me as a phone. Yeah, I was like, I'll get you a hundred investor. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> Tell him to get the fuck out. I will. Dude, I had a... Have I told you about this, like, business idea that I'm really, really fucking keen I'm in. on? I, it, it's not something I want to start, but I just... It's, like, something that I think needs Quit my job right to now. be a thing. It's about, like, a bachelor party weekend. Have I told you about this? You've talked about this. Yeah? Yeah, like, we... You plan it for them? No, it's not even necessarily, like, you plan it for them. It's almost like you're a vid- You're, like, an undercover video crew... It's like you basically produce a fucking movie mm. from the bachelor party. The only reason I would say no to that is because I feel like other people's bachelor parties, if they do something and then you just videotaped it, they wouldn't want that out. Yeah, it's it's intimate. It's for you. Yeah, I guess. It's like you got the 10 guys in the bachelor party. You have someone cool as shit come videotape it and turn it into a fucking movie for you guys. Like you I just, didn't hear this. I never heard this. Yeah, like, I have a really, really, like, strong <laughs> attachment to this idea for some reason. Are you going to just do this to mine? Am I going to what? Are you going to do this to my bachelor party? Are you going to film it? I like my, and then you're going to post it? I might. <laughs> no. See, that's the thing. You can make two. You can have the person that you hire make two different. It's like it's like you hire Rated a videographer. You ra- yeah, like, ones that you could show people and ones that you keep between the, the bachelor guys. party. Between the guys. And, like, I, I feel like the video would be cool as fuck. You know, if you have a good videographer who has a good eye for these things and, like, you have a good bachelor party, for three or four days of content, like, you can make a really cool movie that you're like, oh, fuck, this is dope. So, are we going to be the guinea pig? We could be, yeah. Yeah, I don't care. Like, I think this would be cool. And, like, honestly, that as a business idea, you don't even need to have that many clients. You get a few, like, upscale, rich fucking Westchester kids that are going to... But that's what I'm... I, those are people I'm thinking that probably won't even... Like, they're going to do some fucked up shit or just have so much drugs. Like, if yeah. this gets on camera and then they have this video and it gets leaked, it just ruins their life. There's a lot of things that could ruin your life if it gets leaked. Yeah. Like, you know but what you're paying for? Yeah, I guess. Make it only VHS. <laughs> that... in. So, I had a, f- a friend that works at Cartier and he was trying to say we should start... Me and him start a business on helping guys consult them how to propose. It's interesting. Yeah. I feel like it's just like, use your fucking brain. Like, you just put some thought into it. Yeah, a lot of guys can't. Yeah. Like, I would say mine was very sentimental, I would say. It wasn't like grand gestures. Like, I didn't have, like, angels falling from the pretty, raptors. But pretty intense. Yeah, right? Yeah. So, yeah. So I'm sure there are, def- there are definitely, like, companies that do that. Yeah. But cool guys, like me and you. The problem with that is... She just ain't cool. I'm not cool. Like, at all. I used to be cool. Not cool enough for me to hire you to tell me how to propose. I feel like I could sell you on that if you didn't know me. Maybe. We didn't get this on camera, and I'm really still thinking about this. Yeah, what on camera? You cannot secure a second date with Zendaya. I already told you, it's a, f- it's a fact. I don't not secure second dates. Yeah, but she's famous. And I, I still- just can't secure third dates. <laughs> Is that really a thing? No. I just usually don't want a third date. Second dates are... If you... I, I told you that... The, the first date is the hardest thing to secure. If you're telling me that you already have Zendaya lined up for me to have a first date, it's game over. Did you watch the new Space Jam? No. 
You want to watch New Space Jam? Based on my previous answer to that question, how did it sound? I don't want to watch it either. Good. I'm, because there's no way you didn't watch it already. I swear I didn't watch it. Really? Yeah. I felt like I had to watch it with somebody because you else. Because you don't want it to be disappointing? No, I know it's going to be disappointing. I just don't want to like pay and watch it, it by myself. Where do you, is it on, on like HBO, HBO Max? Max? Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm good. <laughs> Maybe if your friend opens up that lounge and we could play, uh, we could play <laughs> it there. Yeah, I'll let him know. Let's talk about a little bit about the, um, no. the, the fantasy weekend. Deal. So I was talking t- to your sister, Kelly, and we we're like kind of going through the, for the party, which should be Friday. Agreed. My only concern is the draft. Me too. I don't think it can be on Friday. Why? It like we don't. There, a there. It can't be. I know. Yeah, airplane Just, times and like them. Getting I told there. most of them to get. It. You know what's funny about that? I told them all. Okay, we're gonna do the draft Friday. We're gonna have the party Friday night. I'm gonna get the keys Thursday night or Friday early morning. He's gonna let us in early. Oh, is he? I didn't know that. I I feel. Maybe I'm making this up, but I feel like I remember him saying that to us. I don't think so. But okay. I think we could swindle him either way because he lives right there. And I was like, just get your flights early. I want to kick off the draft by like two. By that way, we'll be done by 536. Yeah. Okay. We have two hours before the party starts. Pierce, who lives in fucking New York, was like, yo, I got to work till like four, 430. So I'm like, fuck. That... We can't, the, we're only as strong as our weakest link there yeah. in terms of time. So if we yeah. can't kick off to five, there's no way we no can way. do that. Um, so this is my thing now. Yeah. So this is what I think. And I think it's better. So when they come in, we got Cat's Deli right there. You know, we'll get them some food. And you got to eat Cat's Deli right there. You got to get the strap. You, you got to you know? do that. You got to do it. Okay. But like... And also drafting, I feel like you guys are kind of tired after drafting for that long. And going to straight, I feel like this party might be actually wild. I've invited so many so people. So many people. I've gotten like a, a concerningly high percentage of yeses. Yeah, I, I don't think anybody, I don't, there's always time no one's saying no yeah. to you. Only in the comments because <laughs> this okay. shit is going. Big no brand, but not that weekend. <laughs> that it, I feel like there's going to be like 300 people there. And I feel like that's an overwhelming amount. For some of those guys, so we got to get them in the the groove of things, you know. So maybe start playing games, do some shit, because it's new guys. So we want to kind of introduce them to. Remember, we played some games. Only like two new guys. Oh, really? I haven't picked them yet. I think uh, we had. I think we had eight returners. Oh, I didn't know that. Sexy Pats, myself. I think it make ten, and then two more spots. Okay, whatever. But like you're still getting yeah. them in, the, getting them ready, relax, and all that. And then we party. It's gonna be a long ass night. I know. And then that was my other concern. Is like the party. It's going to absolutely ruin us for Saturday. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. I don't think... I think you need to cancel that brunch. They have to draft, get it back in the groove, that and kills then... kills me. It kills me to do that. We just go rooftop something else. Like, maybe dinner, rooftop, and then another place. Because you're going to kill these guys if you try to get them to start drinking again, and then the draft at some point, like... The draft stuff killer of this whole <laughs> weekend, even though it's called the draft weekend. We just do an online killer. draft Thursday night and then just hang out Friday, <laughs> Saturday, Sunday. Yeah, it just it takes up such a big chunk of it, and I'm just like they're only here for a couple of days, and I, I hate like, I hate not using every minute of the days that we have, which is why, and I want them to experience like legit like a good brunch day that we've had. I know, you know what I mean? Like I really want it. I don't. I don't think it's possible. We're like really close. Everyone's coming in early except for fucking Pierce. So if I could try to move Pierce around and we could start the draft like one or two, I feel like we actually have a lot. How of you gonna move? He literally has work. He said, he, "Like, what are you gonna do? Be like, you switch your shift or something." This ain't BDGE. He probably can't. Is he like a? I'll write him a doctor's note. I'm pretty sure he's like a PI. I'm technically a doctor. You're not. Only technically. No. Physically. No. Come on. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> oh, that was good. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's too good to say no. Uh, I don't think it's... it's pretty sure be... I told like four people they're allowed to stay here after too. Like here in this apartment? Yeah, and that's the other thing. If they come in early, like they could just chill here. Not that that was ever, ever a problem in this that, conversation. This has nothing to do with another. that was going to work. No. <laughs> and uh, also I was thinking about all the supplies we need. There's no fucking way I'm bringing everything up here. Ain't no so fucking way. Friday, we have to lug it down these stairs to bring it back. Whatever you got to do, Doug. Wow. Thanks for listening to me. That's the fucking episode. I did listen. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> yeah, it's on. No. Nah.
this why you let me do this. Let me do tech. Don't fucking be questioning what I'm doing with the technology. You can just shut your eye <laughs> hole for once. We're on a podcast, dog. I get comfy. I feel like we haven't recorded in a month. Did we record two weeks ago? People or has it been three people weeks are ago? ecstatic about it. I know. And my channel's views. <laughs> All the way up I'm over 100,000 already. Jeez. Subscribers. Stop looking. It's not going to... It doesn't need to be green. Check. Check one, two. <laughs> What's wrong with you? You didn't sleep last night, did you? I, uh, I had a good sleep. Looking like big me. I had a lot of things on my plate. Yeah. Not nah, nothing crazy, just like with with Steph, with your sister. Well, that's, that was a, Steve's officially an uncle. Are you are you already an uncle? Call, call me by my real name. Steve's, f- I'm Unc. I'm Unc. <laughs> I'm Unc. I'm Unc. Huge that we're uncles now. Yeah, congrats. Baby Steph. looks just like me. No, it's, it's literally baby looks brown. Just, yeah. Oh, so, yeah, true. What do you mean? No, yeah, that was stressful. Um, that came out of nowhere. You're supposed to be born a month from now, and they're like, "Oh, we're doing it tomorrow." Damn. So that was super set stressful, and then I mean work. You don't care. I have like inventory, so that's stressful. And then I feel like you always talk not always talk about, but that you always get stressed when you have to do inventory. Yeah, inventory is like your week of picking players for fantasy. It's like if I don't do well, <laughs> I get in a lot of trouble. Love that. I don't. <laughs> so that's stressful. And then a lot of movement. So I'm gonna have a lot of interviews next week. I think for so, the job. Yeah. So Hell yeah, we'll see how that goes. So yeah, I guess I'm. I, I maybe I'm sleeping, but there's constant thoughts in my head. You ain't hitting that rim. No, no rem definitely. Sleep. Not. Actually, I don't, I've been drooling a lot. I don't know if that means anything. I wonder if they've done studies on that. Yeah. I feel like that's literally just like depending on how your head is tilted when yeah, you fall asleep. I've it's just like the it's like the a lot science of, behind a lot of drool, a lot of drool, and I've been getting like bruises. I don't know from what. what. I'm not doing anything. Definitely Heath related. You think I it's feel a blood like. clots. Bumble clot. <laughs> you can't say that. Why? Because <laughs> you're that- white. What can't is I feel like I feel like you like I'm allowed to say it. No, it's just a Jamaican thing. Yeah, but it's not it's not offensive, is it? I think so. I think bumble clots like Dude, you're not I Jamaican. Can say, yeah, yeah. 